Welcome to the art project. We are going to create a Dungeons and Dragons tabletop game where the map is on a television. What I'm actually doing is creating the case in this video where you can there's a place to set your dice, a place to set your pencil. Uh, there are lights underneath it. There is the screen. There are plugins for your cell phone. Uh, anything uh, lots of bells and whistles and perks so uh, this is what it looks like when we're done and I'm going to show you a couple of other little opening shots I think you're going to like it it's pretty I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it my friends who were playing with me uh, Dungeons and Dragons were pretty impressed with it so uh, that's what this video is all about however I'd like to also include that making this video was extremely difficult. Uh, first of all, all of the recording and all of that I do myself, all of the editing I do myself. There was over three hours of footage and it was just killing me. And so there was a lot of procrastination. There was a lot of putting it off. Uh, I could not decide whether to delete all of the, what I felt like was very totally unnecessary stuff. So you wouldn't have to watch hours of or you know minutes and minutes and minutes of uh, you know stuff but then in the end I decided you know it's YouTube you can fast forward through it you can rewind uh, this is me going to Lowe's <laughs> um, not that you care about me going to Lowe's but you know I don't know what you care about so let me know in the description down below what you wish I'd left out what I added to it um, but what I'm really trying to say right here is that finally I just had to make this video, get it done, get it over with, get it uploaded to YouTube and go on with my life. Have you ever had something like that? A project that just went on and on and on and you could never seem to see the end of it and you just really had to get, get it done. You just had to get it done so you can move on. Here we go. So uh, what else can I tell you about this? Uh, I know most of my videos are art videos and I do a lot of painting and drawing and but I'm also a woodworker. I'm about to create a television case for a flat screen TV so that I can lay it on the table and play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I have gone through crazy amounts of thinking and diagramming and measuring and all sorts of stuff trying to get just right. All right, so this is the television, and when I make it, I've got to make room for this thing to stick out. I've got to have room for speakers. I've got to make it so that the cord can go out of a hole in the case to the box, along with the HDMI cord, and so on. So I'm going to use boxes and wood and all that to create a Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game console like I said uh, this is a final video so I'm done I'm not taking anything else out or adding anything else to it except for this audio uh, I went to Lowe's I got a bunch of planks and I took the measurements for my drawings that I had done and from measuring the TV you know you got to measure twice and cut once so you don't mess up um, always measure twice double check uh, and so I did that and I used that, uh, those measurements cut these planks to size. I wanted originally for this whole thing to be an actual table that the TV was like set down into the table. But my amazing and wonderful wife, and I don't mean that lightly, she's amazing and wonderful did not want me touching the television. I mean, did not want me touching her dining room dining room table. So uh, we decided to go with a setup that would just sit on top of the table and could be moved into storage when not in use. Uh, I am cutting right here with the dado blade the grooves for uh, the top of this um, case where you can put your dice, where you can put your miniatures, or you can put your uh, pencils, anything that would you know fit in that groove and you don't want to roll off or whatever. We played on this last night and I used the groove for my dice and when I rolled I rolled right on top of the television screen which is actually protected with a piece of 
plexiglass and so the little grooves uh, are sort of one of my favorite parts because they they just kind of come in handy to hold dice and hold pencils uh, right there where you can get to them and not lose them and not worry about them rolling off the table I would like to eventually build into the table build into this case some uh, dice rollers you know some kind of a chute where you can drop your dice in and it rolls it and they come down and they sit in a little uh, platform or uh, a little tray and you can see the dice I always uh, really like that because you know that when you roll your dice through that that it's random completely random as opposed to um, you know rolling it on the table and kind of sliding it to the number you want I don't know I've just always liked dice rollers and so I'd like to build some into the side of the case um, one of the things that I had to do while building this was change the saw blades out uh, quite often so I uh, took the dado blade out put a regular blade in took the regular blade out put a dado blade in uh, it was just um, sort of crazy I've got a great table saw this is my granddad's table saw from I don't know 19 I know he had it in 1970 so this thing's over 50 years old so uh, just one of my favorite things in my wood shop is this uh, basically antique table saw and it takes a beating and keeps on going uh, I put a new fence on it a while back so it's got a, a nice new accurate fence but other than that, the, the table saw has you know, just been you know, awesome for 50 years. Uh, I'm double checking you know, my cuts, trying to make sure that I can make it so that this plexiglass will fit in here. And once I got it right, I cut grooves and all of the framing for the, um, for the top of the case. The top of the case is going to have a piece of plexiglass in it. And then it's just going to fit over the TV almost like a picture frame. Did some sanding. By the way, I have left out so much footage. There was so much sanding to do and so much checking and rechecking and measuring and remeasuring. Uh, here I am cutting a sort of a groove for the sensor at the bottom of the TV where the remote control. Uh, you know where the where the power indicator light comes on and the remote control sensor is uh, so there you go now it fits perfectly uh, I also got some special outlets these are USB uh, outlets it's not really a smart outlet I don't guess I mean, like you can't talk to it it doesn't interact with my uh, Google home system or anything like that but it has a USB-C port in it and it has a uh, US, a regular USB port as well as the two outlets. So I cut holes for each one of these and then I also uh, recessed those holes a little bit so that the face plate of the outlet would fit down in it and it wouldn't stick out beyond the case. I wanted to make sure that all of my wiring was up to code and I'm not a licensed electrician or anything please don't come after me uh, if you are an electrician and you're watching me do this and you want to tell me what I could have done better that's fine I, I'm, I'm cool with that uh, let me know in the description but otherwise I uh, tried to do the best I could and um, made sure that everything was in the proper box uh, after cutting with a regular jigsaw I wanted to kind of smooth it up so I took a straight bit on my router and smoothed all the edges out made them nice and round if the box didn't fit I went back and rerouted it a little bit wanted to make sure that everything fit I didn't squeeze any boxes in there and torque them or anything I also wanted to put a couple of handles on the uh, top edge well not really the top edge but near the top of the box on the sides so that when you're carrying this TV around you can reach in and grab it by these particular handles and they have uh, actually really come in handy uh, 
they're perfect for three fingers to kind of fit in there and curl around to the inside and uh, I took a round over bit and rounded it out uh, better so but I want to make sure everything was sanded and everything was nice and perfect again there were let's see how many in all there were switches and an outlet on the dungeon master side of the table so all in all there are one two three four at least four indentions in it there's a uh, set of switches for the TV the lights and the plug-ins there is the two outlet boxes and then there's a recess for the cords to fit in in addition to that you see right there in that picture all those little holes those one two three four five holes on uh, two sets of five those are for the speakers for the sound to come out of uh, I put the whole box together with pocket screws pocket screws are just a fantastic uh, method they're nice and strong Plus, um, they draw the uh, wood up together. So you, once you put glue in there and then you put the screws in there, uh, it is, it's just fantastic. I love pocket screws. Uh, here's my daughter giving me a hand. Uh, she, she loves to help out. And so I think one of the things that I did was I put this whole thing together and then I had to come back and take it apart, put the glue back, put the glue on it and then put it back together again but that's alright that's kinda how it goes uh, you notice that one part of the frame this part right here uh, well no actually it's not that part another part of the frame the top part I left off and that's how I would put the um, glass in later on here I am kinda fitting the TV uh, make sure everything's gonna fit just right before I screw anything together uh, I can't tell you how many times I took the television out of the box, checked it, put the television back in the box, and all that, trying not to mess up the the glass. I didn't want to break the glass or scratch it or anything like that. Uh, whenever you're using the router, whew, dust, uh, wood particles everywhere. Uh, don't forget to wear your mask. Be careful with uh, power tools. This is my little disclaimer. If you don't know how to use it, get somebody to help you. Don't do anything stupid uh, don't try this at home boys and girls uh, again lots and lots of sanding sanding was probably like 50% of this project thank goodness for power tools this was uh, back in June so it was pretty warm outside but not as bad as it is now Man, right now there have been excessive heat warnings every day where I live uh, but back in June especially with that fan in the back there going it was pretty pretty good and I don't know why that fan is doing like that I don't know if that's just the camera or what but I had that fan blowing on me all the time also to blow the dust out of the way y'all I know this video this audio is a lot of rambling I apologize uh, I do hope you uh, get something out of it. It was a lot of fun. If you play Dungeons and Dragons and you've wanted one of these, uh, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You can get somebody to um, make one for you. You can buy them, you know, at the uh, online stores of some kind. You know, you can you can get different kinds. But uh, what I want you to know or gather from this video. Is that it is a lot of hard work so if you get some if you buy one and it's like two or three thousand uh, dollars it's probably worth it unless you're a do-it-yourselfer and you enjoy the process a lot of work goes uh, goes into this so uh, don't be afraid to uh, drop a couple thousand on it at the store it would cost you a lot less <clears throat> if you build it yourself because you're just paying for the materials but that labor is intense uh, here I am putting a stain on it uh, I've, I've got this espresso stain. I was trying to save as much money as I could and I already had the espresso stain. Uh, it was so hot that as I was brushing this on here it was drying. So it's actually a lot darker than I wanted it to be. Uh, once I got it stained I should have 
uh, spray painted it first but once I got it stained I uh, spray painted the inside of it black just so there wouldn't be any like uh, a lot of reflective uh, stuff going on with the lights or the stuff on the inside I don't know probably didn't have to do that but I went through and spray painted the inside black uh, several years ago me and my wife got a lot of plexiglass and used it to cover our windows to kind of create an insulation because we have uh, we have an old house and it did not have great windows we have since then bought windows from window world and they're wonderful I highly recommend window world but uh, we had all this plexiglass and I've saved it it's kind of scarred up it's kind of messed up but uh, every now and then I use it for a little project like this I think that I must have thought that it was time to put the TV in there permanently I made these little pieces that kind of uh, screw to the wood and hold the wood tight I mean hold the TV tight against the TV so this is just a test run plugged it in turned it on so here's a a thing that I don't like about how this television thing went down I wanted to have these little switches on the outside of the case that you would flip on and then the TV would come on so flip the switch TV on but nope you have to have that remote so I'm making a place right here for the remote to go it, there's a couple of magnets and I put a couple of uh, metal plates on the back of the remote and so it just pops into place um, so I can turn the, turn the switch on and the TV will power up but I still have to pull the remote out and turn the TV on that way so it's like two switches instead of just one remote I don't know so now begins the process of putting in all the outlets I had one outlet box that was like a half box that I thought I was going to use to like save space but as it turns out, I didn't really need to save space because I had to have room for these bigger outlet boxes. So eventually I take out the half outlet box and replace it with a larger one, I believe. Uh, I just screwed these in. And uh, I don't know if you've ever done wiring, but man, wiring is hard on your hands. Bending the wire, squishing the wire into the right places curling the wire, tightening the screws, uh, all that stuff. Uh, if your electrician uh, is expensive, uh, he's probably worth it because, again, that's a lot of hard work. And um, even for an experienced uh, electrician, it's still work. So um, the original box that I wanted to store the cords in was not quite large enough, so I decided to use this uh, box that screws came in. I drilled a couple of holes in it to run the wires through and then I uh, glued it into place. One of the cords that goes through it is the HDMI cord and so a simple hole is not large enough. You have to have a square hole so I cut a square or rectangular hole into this and pulled the cord through. Once I pulled the cord through I fed it through the hole in the frame in the case and then I put some sort of um, construction adhesive on the edges and I've been sort of afraid that it was going to pop out like the glue wasn't going to hold but so far it has held pretty well I think the glue that I used was some sort of power grab. Uh, so then the power, okay, so here's the HDMI cord being plugged in. Once the HDMI cord is plugged in, it goes through the box and out the side of the case, and that's it. So you really kind of need, if you do one like this, you're going to need a much longer cord, a much longer HDMI cord than I expected. Um, I kind of expected just to have my laptop right there next to the screen and plug the HDMI cord in but so far most of the tables that I've put this case on uh, the laptop had to be a little bit further away from the screen so um, the power of course goes 
out that one box you can see on that outlet box on the left there's a black cord sticking out of it all right so that is the power that powers up that particular uh, sw those switches that box that's going to be right there and then from there that power goes all along the edges to the other outlets and to the lights and so on one of the reasons that I wanted to leave all this video footage is so that if you did decide to make a box similar to this one in any way uh, you might could rewind it and slow it down or do whatever you need to do to kind of see how it was that I did my particular case if that helps you out in any way so there you go again to all you electricians out there watching me do this if you got any comments let me know this is three switches one is for the TV one is for the lights and one is for the outlets I don't know why I did that just kind of one of those like uh, con console you know like Star Trek hey I've got control of the case right here flip 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 you know that sort of thing uh, and I don't know maybe it's necessary installing the USB outlet here I am testing it out so I've got a plug in and the light the lamp comes on turn the lamp off turn the lamp on turn the lamp off that light works excellent uh, also the USB ports worked and everything was groovy so decided to take everything apart again tape everything off and spray everything on the inside some of the um, less visible parts black so that if you happen to see them from the top or if you're um, sitting down and you could see up under the box at all it wouldn't you know just be raw wood and it would be less noticeable these four parts right here are part of the base of this box originally I wasn't going to put a base I was just going to lay it on the table uh, but as it turns out my TV case makes makes it too big for the table really and so you don't have any place to sit your character sheet or your boxes or roll your dice so so I made these this little three inch pedestal for it to go on and again use pocket screws to put it back together and this holds it up off the table about three inches so there's actually room for these lights that I'm installing and uh, for your character sheet to slide up underneath the television if you need to uh, this is the lights mechanism uh, this little piece that I'm checking for size is the remote sensor so if you want to change the lights at all you have to point the remote the light remote at this particular sensor and then it will work and if that sensor was covered up or was inside the box well that just wouldn't work so I made a little hole in the uh, side of the box and so uh, on the dungeon master side so the dungeon master can control the lights from there on the inside of the box there is a outlet box that faces in and the lights are plugged into it and so is the television so when I flip the switch on the outside of the case it turns on that outlet and when it turns on that outlet that turns on the lights and it uh, powers up the television still have to take the remote for the television and turn it on the lights will actually come on uh, based on whatever their last setting was so if you set it set the lights to white and you flip that switch they come on white if you have it set to fade through the different colors then when you turn it on it'll fade through the different colors when you flip that switch um, so here I am feeding the lights the cord into the box into the base and then wrapping the lights around it. these lights are basically indoor outdoor lights they're encased in sort of some sort of clear rubber and they even had rubber um, like wire holders 
brackets to hold it in place. And so I went around the, uh, the thing and screwed it in. Uh, so now when you light it up, or when you turn it on, it lights up. It's great. All right, here I am putting the TV in, I think, one final time. And I had, again, these little black strips of wood, these strips of wood that I painted black to hold the TV in place. Plugging in everything one final time and taping the wire to the back of the TV. Putting the base on it. And securing it with a few screws. A lot of the stuff that I did, I had to do with, like, old plywood or old stuff uh, so like the plywood I used for the base was kind of old uh, here is me cleaning the window and here it is finally on my table on my dining room table so you can see how the character sheets fit up under there uh, you can see how the lights I can change them they can fade put on different colors for the mood my laptop sits right over there on the left and the HDMI cord reaches there perfectly. Here it is, me and some friends up in Tennessee got together and played and it worked out perfectly there too. Here are some of our miniatures on the television screen, on the flat screen, and they were protected, the screen's protected by a piece of plexiglass. And it was really great at night when those lights on the bottom of it were all lit up. And these are the final, final sexy shots of my role playing flat screen TV case setup. I hope you like it. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. If you're new to this, please subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Again, I'm sorry for the audio and my just like being completely random, but I had to get this video done and off of my shoulders and move on with my life. Until next time, have a great day. Talk to you later. Thanks.